a lot of times when you're creating your geometry you want to make sure that you have a surface normal that points in a specific direction now there's a couple of ways that you can achieve this one of the easiest ways is to use one of my absolute favorite tools join if I come in here and join these elements and I before I select OK I select preview I get this arrow this arrow is telling me what the surface normal direction is doing and this is important because if I come in now let me go into part design if I come in now and create a thick surface you'll notice that the default direction is in that surface normal direction. If I come into my join and swing that around, you'll notice that the offset swings around as well. It's important to keep track of your surface normal direction uh, there are times when you may have a process built off of a surface that it's critical that the surface normal remains in the in the proper direction. Maybe you have a, a an NC programmed to that surface, and it's based off of the surface normal. If you're not careful, things may switch around and want to cut the other side of the surface, or the tool may want to swing around. So there's one instance. There's also other instances where when you get into surface meshing and, and things of that nature. If I have a lot of geometry built off of, let's say, a, uh, a surface, and I went to go and replace one of the base elements with a new surface, and the surface normals are switched, I could always reverse things, and it'll create an inverse and put it in the tree as an inverse, but um, now you have an additional feature in the tree. And inverse is a good feature, but for me personally, I like to use join. Even if it's already a singular surface, maybe it's already a split. Um, one good method to make sure that you always have a consistent normal direction is to join the final element. Always join the final element, and you can control which direction the surface is going. The nice thing about a join is it gives you several options as well so if I need to go in there and add an additional patch I can do that now if I go back into my generative shape design you'll notice that I have another option here it's called invert orientation with the invert orientation let me go ahead and hide this and let me delete this actually I just hide that for now here I have a surface, same basic surface as the join. With the invert orientation, it allows me to basically pick that surface, and that is the direction that the inversion is going to go in. Now I do have control here. I can reverse this, so I can control that surface, which direction that surface is going in as well, to control any downstream features that are attached to that surface uh, but again you don't have some of the options that you have with join maybe you need to make a, a slight little modification and you have an additional surface to add in or you need to up the the distance tolerance or the angular threshold let me go ahead and here, let me hide the inverse there's my join and uh, you can use some of the features here, the like simplify result, angular threshold, maybe you have a merging distance that's greater than 0 0.001. Whatever that may be, you can correct errors, you can you can add additional surfaces. So there's a lot more power to using the join for the purposes of the inverse. So once again, I'm using a tool that joins an extremely stable element. So you go in there and make whatever modifications you want to. And again, Inverse, you'll see inverses pop up occasionally. If I were to do something like, uh, if I were to replace a surface or replace an element, and the surface normal or the element normal is pointing in the wrong direction, when I reverse that normal, it's going to create an inverse for me automatically. So one way to get 
rid of that inverse is to either build the surface in a different fashion or use a join and control which direction the surface normal points in. Just a useful little hint, good way to understand what's going on, especially for any of your post processes. Anything that you're going to use downstream, you're going to definitely want to control the surface normal. A lot of times, body in white groups, what they'll do is instead of thickening their surfaces, because those surfaces can be very complex and heavy, they'll just leave them as surfaces, is the surface normal will be demonstrated by a vector line. And when they're done, that surface that they're creating has to have the normal direction. That way, when it goes to any post processes, it will automatically offset in the correct direction as well. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to be careful of your surface normals.